everybody. It's the end of June, which means it is time for my mid-year planner check-in to let you know how things are going with my planner system, any changes I'm going to make going into the second half of the year. And there are going to be some changes this time. Not a lot though. First and foremost is my Google Calendar, which is our basically our forward planning calendar. Now, one of the big changes I have made to my Google Calendar in recent months is that I have really moved all of my work planning out of my Google Calendar and into ClickUp, which I'll talk about in a minute. It used to be that I would do all my editorial planning in Google Calendar and then do the individual video planning elsewhere, but it just made more sense to put them somewhere else. The only things I keep on my Google Calendar are timely things like live streams, stuff like that. But generally speaking, my Google Calendar is massively important to me for keeping track of family appointments, of our dog walking calendar. My oldest has their own calendar with all their meetings that Jesse and I are shared in with. So yeah, Google Calendar holds my life together. I'm also continuing to use my bullet journal. I'm halfway through it, so I think it should last me the whole year. This is really not much of a bullet journal and just more of like a notebook that I use for notes, occasionally tracking things, etc. It's tough to film my setup for the month of July, but I plan on putting some gardening stuff in here to make notes for my next round of gardening. So yeah, this definitely will continue to be used although it has really been relegated from like the central piece of my planning as it has been in years past to being basically like a catch-all kind of dumping ground. I originally wanted to do daily brain dumps. It's really not necessary for me. So instead it's just there for when I need something. So some months I use a bunch of pages, some months I use a couple of pages. I'm fine with that. Make it work for you, right? And then finally, the last piece of my personal planning will be my new Moxie Life uh, six month planner. I'm on my last week of this guy. You can see how chonky it is. If you are interested in the flip through of a full, full, well, not full year, cause it's now a year long planner, but a full six months in one of these, let me know. And I will film one of those. I already have up my quarterly assessment that I did to kind of wrap this planner up as well as my last plan with me in it. Those are already available on the channel. And then if you are interested in the setup of this planner that is coming uh, next, I believe that'll be my next video up, but this is the same planner, a six month vertical undated weekly planner. It's in the blush cover instead of the taupe cover. I just figured why the hell not. I actually ordered this from the 40% off like seconds sale. I haven't been able to figure out what exactly is wrong with it. I, I don't know why it was in the seconds, which is fine with me, but like, yeah, I figured I might as well order it during the sale. I would love to do the whole year in one of their planners. It would save me the pain in the ass of having to go and transfer over everything, as you'll see in my setup video. But um, the biggest issue, I swear this is, I talked about this at the beginning of the year. The biggest reason I didn't go with the dated yearly planner from the Moxie Life is that I just didn't like that the habit trackers had color every month. I wanted them to be neutral. So, and this is much more of a neutral option because it's undated. So if they offer a version that has non-colorful habit trackers next year, I will likely go with the dated version, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to stick with Moxie Life. This goal setting system is working really well for me. Again, check out my last quarterly assessment if you'd like to know more about that. So this is the planner where I put all of my personal life, my to-do lists for my personal life, unless they're big enough where I need to use the bullet journal. Um, my habit tracking's in here. My goal setting for my personal life is in here. All of that. This year I made a really big decision to separate my goal planning for personal and business. And it has been really helpful, I think, in establishing some boundaries. So I'm excited to continue on with that. But yeah, I'm ready to chunk this skinny boy up. So that's my personal life. Google Calendar, Moxie Life for my main planner, bullet journal in case I need to make notes. Now let's talk about my work life. Not many big changes here, except for one. Uh, it's like, it's a change, but it's not a change. Okay, <laughs> you'll see what I mean. So first and foremost, I already mentioned ClickUp. ClickUp is my project management software tool, however you want to put it. ClickUp is where I keep all of my work projects and all of their details because it's just easier to keep everything online because most of what I do, like aside from the artwork that I make, most of what I do is done via computer. So having it all on the computer is helpful. I did a video about it. I will link it down below, but in like very quick overview, I have three areas within it, 
three spaces, if you will. That's what they're called. One is for all of my content stuff. One is for all of my art stuff. And then one is for administrative stuff. So within that, I have uh, tasks and projects for like my big freelance work, for my Etsy shop, for any workshops I'm going to be doing. I've got stuff in there for licensing. I have stuff in there for all individual videos. Each have their own and po- individual videos, individual podcasts, each have their own like little task with all of their info within. So I've just got all the things. When I look at that, it gives me kind of an overview of deadlines that are coming up and things that are necessary. When it comes to actually managing what I do on a given week, that's when I start turning to paper, at least sort of. This is where the biggest change is coming in. I am still using the HB90 method. As a matter of fact, the week you see this video, I will be doing, I did not do the with the boot camp this year just because it didn't work out timing wise for me, but I am going to be using the boot camp to go through and um, get everything set for the quarter. But currently, my paper is going to be digital. This year so far in switching out my work and my personal planning, having a planner to write work to do lists and everything down, I thought about just using my bullet journal for it, but I was really trying to set boundaries. Now there may come a point where I do just switch back to my bullet journal for it, but that's not what I'm doing right now. The first quarter I used the plum paper daily, which I liked, but I wanted to give the Moxie Life Daily a try because I liked the weekly little overview page in the Moxie Life Daily for my work life. This quarter, I found that I wasn't using the whole planner for the Moxie Life because I wasn't using the goal setting stuff. I used the HB90 stuff for that. And there was just a bunch of leftover pages, so it felt like a waste. And I didn't want to order another one. It wasn't quite working. So currently, my idea is to go digital. So I'm actually utilizing the GoodNotes app on my iPad. And I already had the digital file for the HB90 goal planner because I got that at the beginning of the year. And then I bought the digital pages for the um, the daily from the Moxie Life is 10 bucks and you get the weekly layout and the daily layout. You don't get any of the goal setting stuff, which is fine with me because I don't need that. Like I said, I'm not using the Moxie Life goal setting for work. I'm using the HB90. And so what I did was I put them together in an HB90 slash Moxie Life quarter three work planner. All right. So let's check this out. I'm going to show you it. Let's see if I can turn the lights down just a skosh and see if you can see it a little bit better. So just put a generic cover in here. So we go in here, HB90 method goal planner, and then I have the quarterly review for quarter two, which I will be doing once I dig into that next week. And then I have the notes pages. And then I didn't pull out any of the quote pages. I probably should have, but whatever, I can deal with that later. And then I've got all of the goal setting stuff for quarter three from the HB90 planner. So the checklist, the lists for need, should, and want to do, task blocks, daily, monthly, quarterly, yearly, weekly tasks, the um, time management, like the page where you figure out how much time you have on any given week with versions of that. So again, I need to go pull one of those out. Brainstorming pages, and then the page for my goals, and then the project brainstorm pages. And I can always do, that's one of the beauties of using the, um, digital planners, I can duplicate any of these. Now, to be fair, I could also print any of these, which is what I did before, but we're doing it in here. Goal timeline pages, and I'll pull out anything I'm not gonna use, I'll just delete, but I just left it all in here for right now. Project planning pages, again, they only give you two, but you're gonna wanna use multiple of these if that's something that you plan to do. Future projects, the like project parking lot, and then the milestones, and then we go into the monthly calendar, which I'm not sure if I'm gonna use or not. And then this is where the Moxie Life starts. So this is the weekly overview for Moxie Life, the Monday through Sunday weekly overview. And then you have the daily page. Now what I did, because I don't use this when I'm not working on my days off, and I currently am taking two days off a week, fingers crossed. So I'm I'm working Sunday through Thursday, but I, this, yeah. So I put in five daily pages. Then I have the task page from the HB90 system with the task block stuff for the beginning of the week with the dates for the week and then the questions for the weekly review. And then we go into the next week. And so that repeats five days worth of to-do list pages, the weekly overview, and then the weekly review page. And I go through that to the end of the month. And then at the end of the month, we have the review and then we go into the next calendar and then the whole thing repeats. But each of the, the these pages here from the HB90 planner are dated because that's a dated planner. But then the Moxie Life pages are not dated. So then 
I get through all of the months, July, August, September, at the end of week 13, which is September 26th through October 2nd. So that's the end of this quarter because I'm on the Monday start of the quarter. So technically this quarter is starting on July 4th, I believe. Once I'm done with week 13, it's the quarterly review. Whoops. I went right back to the beginning again. Um, it's the quarterly review page at the very, very end which is four pages of quarterly review and then a couple notes pages. And then that's the end. And I also have dotted notes pages in case I want to enter those in. But so this basically takes the Moxie Life and the HB90 and mushes them together based on how things have gone for me in the last two quarters. So we'll see how this works. If this works okay for me, what I may wind up doing is getting the Moxie Life inserts and then printing, getting the eight, because this is the one of the reasons the pages look wonky is because I had the letter sized HB90 planner, but then the A5 sized Moxie Life. So what I could do is get the inserts from Moxie Life and then print out, get the A5 planner and print that out and then put them together if I really wanted to have it be pen. But honestly, like that's a lot of work. This was not quite as much work. And so I figured this will be the best way to give it a try. So I'm giving, I am Unless this really sucks and I really, really hate writing digitally, unless I really hate it. My goal is to use this for the whole quarter. If I really hate it, the Moxie Life inserts are supposed to be coming back into stock next month. So I guess we'll see. I started officially next week. If you are interested in me doing a week using this planner digitally, let me know because this is very, I have tried a digital planner once before and that was for a reading journal and I didn't follow through with it. Although to be fair, I also decided I don't like reading journals. So that might be part of it. I have used this for worksheets. I have used this for like, like worksheets where I downloaded them into here and answered them on the thing because I didn't want to print them or just using it for note taking for certain things. So I have used a writing style on a, like not just for like freelance work, but like a journaling style of good notes. I have used that successfully and not successfully. So we'll see how this goes, but I'm excited to do it this way because this feels like the best of both worlds. I don't feel like I'm wasting pages. I have the goal setting system for work that I prefer. I have the planner pages for work that I prefer because I like the HB90 goal setting, but I'm, I'm a much bigger fan of the Moxie Life daily pages than I am for the daily stuff that comes with the, it's not that it sucks, it's just not for me. We'll see how this goes. I'm not going to try fucking with stickers or anything like that. You'll see my project stash down. Stickers and me just did not agree when it came to work planning this last month, so we'll talk more about that soon. The point being is that this is going to be my new work planner and we'll see how it goes. And if you do any sort of digital planning in this style, give me tips, please give me tips. And then to go along with the HB90 system, I am continuing to use my Kanban board, which I will reset. I actually didn't do a great job with it this past quarter for various reasons, but I am excited to go into the new quarter. So I'll get that reset when I go through the whole process and that'll be my work thing. So the way my work planning flow goes is that ClickUp has all of my deadlines and information for ongoing projects. My Kanban board has all of the things I say I want to do this quarter so I can keep track of those. And then this planner is where I actually work day to day and help decide what I'm gonna do every week using the deadlines from ClickUp and the task priorities from Kanban board. So that it works really well together. We'll just see how this works, I guess. So that is my planner stack. Really, it's not much of a stack. It's it's a bullet journal, it's a planner, it's my iPad, and then it's the stuff on my computer as well as my Kanban board. Plus my, my as I talked about on my um, planner mullet video, which I will link below, my top planner essentials, we have my shitty notebook, my shitty little notebook that I do bust out when I need it but I don't really consider that part of the stack. That's just, that's a notebook, right? But I mean, I guess you could say the same thing for this bullet journal, but fucking whatever, semantics, right? Anyway, so this is gonna be my upcoming quarter's worth of planners. We'll see, I'm not gonna say the whole year. This is supposed to be for the whole year and this will be for the whole year, but this, I'm, I wanna give it the quarter. Let me know in the comments below, have you made any changes from your choices at the beginning of the year? Or if you are somebody who swaps planners at the academic year, what are you using this year? Let me know in the comments as well as any digital planning tips. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, my dudes, peace.